Welcome back, guys, to the MSC semifinals where we've just concluded our uh, blind pick first game and Gen.G were obliterated. Uh, Top Esports came out with a much better draft, much better game plan, and uh, served it straight up to Gen.G. And now we move into game number two. We put bans back in place, we put a draft back in place, and hopefully Gen G's will be something resembling a composition that can win a game. Yeah, uh, that, you know, uh, we just kind of want to <laughs> ignore what happened in game number one and go to game two and pretend it didn't happen except that Top Esports are winning by one. And that's exactly what Gen G as a, as a team wants to do, as well as Helen. Hello. They say life was the problem. <laughs> life was the only player with a champion picked correctly, and uh, he didn't win them the game. So, yeah, I don't think he played that badly or anything like that. No, um, no I don't think so either. But maybe they just want to try something new here with Kellen in the bottom side. Maybe we're going to see like a Yumi or a kind of like a mage support or something like that. That maybe life wasn't, you know, maybe something different from a Nautilus. So we'll be curious to see how they change things up in this game. Yep, I, uh, I don't think life was a problem whatsoever, so we'll, we'll see whether Kellen does have some dark technology put together for himself. You can see Ruler there still with some smiles on their faces here on the side of Gen G. Not too worried. I believe that's Odin behind them, uh, currently helping out with the draft. Not entirely sure uh, which part of the Gen G uh, sort of coaching staff they use for their drafting coach. Uh, some teams utilize head coaches for that, uh, such as T1, as, uh, of course, Coach Kim, head coach and, of course, drafting coach. Um, whether that's uh, Odin moving up there, I am not entirely sure. But let's see whether, when we get some bands involved and all this sort of stuff, whether we'll have a better experience. Everybody's getting their caffeine, as what I'd love to talk about in the first series, talking about the different caffeine strategies you use Yep, when you are going into a best of five. A heavily caffeinated man, apparently. <laughs> Although I, I've never actually watched him drink coffee. Yeah, I don't I don't think he... I don't know if he does. Yeah, I mean, actually. I'm an ultra coffee enthusiast. True. I actually, I built up a tolerance to caffeine to the point where I'd have, like, nine Red Bulls and go to sleep. And it was fine. That's crazy. That was when I was <laughs> I was young, okay, and I just thought that energy energy drinks tasted very good. They do. You There's know? a lot of sugar in them. There is a lot of sugar in them, which does help with the staying awake factor I'm as well. I'm a big fan. I just you know <laughs> I don't want to drink that much sugar, so I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to and stop you myself. You don't drink coffee at all, as well, right? Yeah, it, it just makes me feel like really lightheaded, so I just don't like it. Huh. It's, it's weird. I don't know. It, it affects me in a strange way. I mean, so I, I'm I think not a that coffee guy. I think that affects a lot of people who, uh, you know, don't drink a lot of caffeine. But I don't think I'd ever recommend joining me in my massive building up a tolerance. tolerance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, it's not something that you want to do. Utilize it uh, to its full effect when you feel like it, and uh, don't build up a reliance on such a thing. As now we are into the draft. Blue side for Gen G, red side for Top Esports, and a trundle is going to be banned. Top do take away the Varus. I thought maybe they'd experiment with leaving it up because obviously Genji don't think it's that good. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think Genji will swiftly realize the error of their ways and would probably pick that up, but it's just so strong that you just can't even take the chance. As a lot of focus here on the mid lane, uh, up against FPX, there was a lot of, you know, Galio Rumble. Yeah. Et cetera, you know, Senna bands, but here it's a totally different playing field. As you see, uh, a couple of night picks are going to be taken off the board the LeBlanc and the Syndra to nine. Yep, Top Esports thinking about whether they ban the Graves here. But it's going to be Callista. The uh, respect going over to Ruler. And uh, they are going to lock away the Ezreal. Has been sort of the third rung. Of Eddie carries, followed by Aphelios, which Jackie Love could lock away now. Denying Zoe, I think, is a fantastic idea. Um, BDD and Knight. Uh, Knight, a fantastic Zoe player as well, over in the LPL. Would be an understandable pickup. And you can pair it with uh, Aphelios relatively well also, uh, if you get the right weapons. And that is going to be locked away. So now Kasa, he can take the Graves if he wants. I think BDD could 
probably easily pick up Azir into this. I mean, Azir can do pretty well in lane up against Zoe. Yeah. She's very predictable when she hops back. You're also up against, they're showing a very uh, immobile AD carry, and it's it's BDD's bread and butter, right? So I, think I, actually, I wouldn't mind seeing an Azir pick here. I think Azir and then lock in Thresh. Because I think you want to deny Thresh to avoid the the lantern ruining yeah, all of your fun. Actually, sounds pretty good. The Azir seemed pretty obvious. You were talking about Graves. They might prioritize that a little bit more than the denial on the support. So Graves is going to be picked up. And now I guess top esports do need to prioritize getting Thresh or losing it. Genji would be happy about that, or get themselves an AD carry. That, uh, sorry, a, a jungler that they would like. Lee Sin. Did do some winning in the final game yesterday, but I think that we all do look down our nose a little bit at that pickup. And the Thresh there, top esports, I love this from them in this draft so far. Yeah, that's uh, that, again, bread and butter bottom lane. The, the two of them going pretty well together. The Aphelios and the Thresh. Yep. Maybe gonna be taken off the board. No Ezreal Yumi in response. And Yu Yanja was just great on the Thresh, to be honest, in the last game. I think uh, not enough priority was given by Gen G on denying that one from him. The uh, Orn taken away from Rascal, the Yumi taken away from Kellen, and Wukong to be removed from the arsenal of 369. Rascal might need to be uh, digging through the, uh, the champion pool just a little bit to try and find something. He does have a lot of options for himself. Final ban here from Genji. We'll see whether they keep their attention towards the top side or whether the jungle needs a bit of focus. And it is going to be the Lee Sin taken away from Kasa. <laughs> Rek'Sai Instalock. The Rek'Sai Zoe combination has been something that we've spoken about quite a few times in the past. Works well as a uh, jungle mid duo. But uh, honestly, Rek'Sai, another champion that we don't necessarily hold in too high regard here on the LCK broadcast is. Someone, I think, fell down behind us, <laughs> uh, rocked the whole cast. Or, or it was an earthquake. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. As uh, Kellen is going to take Ooh. away the Tarek, so looking fabulous here on the Rift so far. Combination of very handsome uh, champions in Graves and the Tarek. As far as handsome gentlemen uh, champions, you think concern, you're, Genji winning. When you get a little bit older, you think you might go for a mustache beard combo like Graves? No, I'm going to grow my hair out and shave like Tarek. <laughs> no, I was going to do that. <laughs> You're going to be the Graves. Oh, is that how is that how it's going to work? Yeah. I'm actually growing out my hair right now. Oh, really? Yeah. I got it trimmed. That's why it looks like a I, giant I bush actually, on top right yeah, now. Yeah, no, I actually saw that like you've, you've had it like trimmed towards the side, and I was like, but it's really long. Did yeah. he get a haircut? Did Or did he not? Did yeah. your girlfriend do that at home? Like... Perplexing. Maybe. Oh, top esports opting in for this poke style of composition here with the Jace locked in for 369. It's going to be against the Cannon. It's a, it's a matchup that works out relatively well uh, for Jace, but largely a skill matchup between these two, and we know how that goes after game number one. Um, we'll see whether Rascal can uh, pull himself together in this one, but I think I like uh, what both teams have done. I, I think top, top esports do have a very standard comp. They can play around poke in the mid game very well and then get behind Jackie Love with Yu Yanja as support in the late game. But Genji have so much of that team fight power, jungle control early, and a self sufficient 80 carry. So uh, you can have Rascal and BDD diving forward, and Ruler should be pretty okay, especially with Kellen beside him. So uh, Genji's team fighting composition certainly geared more towards the late stages of the game, but top esports. They should be able to create advantages for themselves uh, between that 15 to 25 minute mark. Yeah, I look at this comp, and they got this in a pick ban, by the way. And I'm like, this is a million times better than game one. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you compare it to game uh, one, and Gen G have won the game. This is beautiful. Comparatively, it's just no contest. Like, you get so many different great parts. It, it, it's, it just works so much better as a team, too. Anyway, we'll have to wait and see how the results do come through. I'm curious about that cannon blind pick. That was the one thing that kind of left me scratching my head. Of course, it can open the fight pretty well for Azir to kind of sweep up yep. afterwards. And Ezreal is also great at uh, team fight cleanup. So. And they've got the bad. AOE damage and the collateral damage and the true shot barrage, things like that. There is a lot of options here. See how it works in game number two.
환영합니다. Yeah, here we are, game two. That's a nice skin. The RNG logo is being flashed, as well as the Flash Wolves. <laughs> Kasuj is going back through his repertoire of uh, teams that he's had success on. I was played for Flash Wolves for so incredibly long. I still just associate Kasa with Maple. Yeah. In my brain. They are just a duo. Hasn't played with Maple for a little while now. As, uh, okay. Many now we're into the real game. Uh, I was talking to Cloud Templar backstage, and he was like, it's okay, event match. <laughs> and uh, he was, yeah. of course, referring to last series, which FPX managed to uh, reverse sweep, I guess, after a loss in game one. So maybe, just maybe, Gen.G can do their best FPX impression. And uh, look, world champions as well, they have that in common. Good old FPX and Gen.G. It was a little bit more recently, though, for FPX, and our Gen G's roster has changed a lot in that time. Let's see how this early game is going to go. As Clint starting off in the enemy jungle, and Kasa completely unaware of what's happening here. They don't have the deep vision. There is there is a ward there on the red, but it's a red. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. It's so <laughs> maybe they couldn't see it. It looks like it was like on the edge, like just barely not covering the pit. So now this is a awkward. lot of damage from the end of the line. Clint stealing away the big Raptor. Kasa, his jungle has been just obliterated. It's now Jackie Love down to about 100 health. Good exhaust under Ruler. He's also going low. Jackie Love with a lot of extra range in that Calibrum now turning his attention to Kellen. Both AD carries very low, eating through their pots. Biscuit and for Ruler. Some bitho early here in this game so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about Karsa <laughs> right now. Uh, he, he had his red taken away. He oh, wasted no, a bit of time. He didn't clear the Raptors. The Raptors were denied by Clid. Karsa let Clid have them and then uh, decided that he'd uh, do his best to, to leave the area uh, and try and get what he can. But it's not happening. Good playback. It's Kellen down very low. Flash has to be blown. That's good exhaust onto Jackalov. Mystic shot is weep. And Jackalov <laughs> goes down. 2v2 kill this time for Gen G bottom lane. <laughs> I love the thumbs down too. It's like, <laughs> get out of here. We were just joking, you know. Not this time. Just Where's Jake's in the blind. In the blind. Oh, well, they, is they dead. say that Kellen's dead. Yep. Maybe we need to bring mine back. I don't know. Yeah, and then the monster jumps out at you in a scary movie. Yep. Uh, yeah, that was really. Just mechanical outplay, 2v2, straight up from Ruler and Kellen. They were already having that biffo you were talking about. And uh, and they used one exhaust yeah. to do that. That's that's all they invested. Now, Knight getting electrocuted here by BDD, taking a bit more of a powerful 1v1 summoner spell uh, on his Azir. And he's already putting on so much pressure here in this lane. Right, with our paddle star now not aimed at the minion wave, which is going to get a lot of time and space and also deny him so many of these creeps. Damn, BDD is, he's angry. The beast has been angered, Valdez. And uh, I would certainly uh, worry for anyone that's going to be facing BDD later in solo queue as well. Yeah, if you're if you're at that level where you're facing BDD in <laughs> solo queue, you're probably not watching this. <laughs> it's probably like couple of you guys out there, but it's a very limited supply of people that uh, actually do get that honor of being at that level. You don't know. I mean, Faker might be at home watching this. Yeah, I think so. Hi, Maybe. Faker. Chovy. Not our broadcast, but uh, well, I mean, a MSC <laughs> broadcast, you know. <laughs> uh, Jackie Love. Uh, pinged out there. Pretty connection from Ruler. He's back being channeled by Casa as well. So Casa. After playing the Trundle, now on the Rex side, not super excited about his uh, his jungle picks so far this this series. The Graves from Clid needs to get more work done. So far, he's been farming more camps. That is definitely a thing. And uh, you can see, Rule is not ahead by too much. Bit of a back being picked up by Jackie Love and Yu Yanja, so they don't want to press too far forward. Just a pickaxe there in the hands of the Aphelios, but it's more battle stats than the uh, tier that Ruler collected. We have a look at this. 2v2 kill once again. Yeah, just 
you just got to watch Ruler from here. Deku Love, it's the end of the exhaust. He sticks around. And Ruler's like, you're standing not behind minions. I can hit everything at you. And Ruler's just mindfulness to notice that and to be able to outplay it and take advantage of Jackie Love's mistake was quite nice. Well, there's the flash knockoff as Rascal's going to flash eventually. 369 Whoa. looks for it. Doesn't get the last auto. And Rascal Whoa. will make it out with his life. Well, we got to see the replay on that one. I, I, I was like, does he have Conqueror? Like, what is going on? Like, how, how is he generating so much health? I feel like maybe he had, like, a, a health pot. And he has the, the rune that... Oh, uh, yeah, Time Warp Tonic. Yeah. He might have actually used his uh, refillable there as Casa gets back towards the top side, flash forward from Clid, but he doesn't get the auto off. And now Rascal looks for the Q. He's not going to oh. find a great knock up. Finally, the auto comes in, but the health pot had done its work. And that was... That was... A, there's a word to use for that. I don't want to use it Enormous. Here. That <laughs> not great. Uh, not great at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's just a little bit of... 369 is just proving perhaps. that he's way better than Rossi right now. Yeah, he's really showing that to us right now. He's, he's got the right champion for it, too. And, and Clit's the one that starts this all off. He's calling for it, probably. Controlled by minions really hard here as uh, Clint flashes. I think that was while the CC of the knockoff was happening yep. uh, by Casa. That's why it looked like he canceled autos. And he this was really one. well played by Tov. Got that second knockup, and this is really good news now for the top lane, and especially for the Rek side. Take a look at Karsa. He went down bottom, took advantage of the, you know, sticking around at the bottom lane of Ruler and Kellen did. And then he's in the perfect position to counter him yeah. up in the top side. So really, you know, we were talking about all the, the members of Top Esports and what they offer to the team. and. We mentioned how Karsa is, you know, he's good. He's got a great, you know, legacy. Essentially, he's been around forever. But we, we weren't really saying that he was the main carry of the team. But in this game, he is truly the guy that's always in the right place at the right time and has been able to, you know, spare the blushes of his teammates. Yeah, precisely. Ruler now goes back and collects himself the Mana Mute, which is actually a lot of battle stats all at once as Casa is going to use that advantage that he had. Take down this Ocean Drake, first Drake of the game. The second one's going to be Infernal coming up next. Cloud will be the one after that. No mountains today. Zar Clid waiting to see when this bottom lane is going to come back. Kellen checks the brush, clears out a control ward. And uh, not going to be diving any turrets right now. So, uh, Ruler, he's in a good spot. Does have that extra kill available. And uh, about a minion wave ahead as far as CS. And on his Ezreal. So, mid game going to be good. Clid trying to find you, Yanja, but no dazzles this Ooh. time. True shot barrage <laughs> just slicing through yeah. the bottom lane of top. It's a very squishy bot lane. Even Thresh before he gets some items can be a bit squishy. And you can see that damage was quite nice. So, it's going to. Push them back. Ruler's going to be able to pick up one of these these plates. But Karsus here again. He's level six already. Looking yeah. to get some work done. Yeah, you can see Ruler almost faded in there. His Karsa channeling the back for the minute. In fact, everyone going for a reset. This is going to be a plate opportunity for Gen G. As Kellen looks further forward, no bubbles on to BDD this time. But I believe he ate one relatively recently. And uh, he's got teleport, I believe. So uh, does need to be a little bit careful of uh, these picks from the Zoe in the mid game. This is a very different game to last game. Last game, Ruler was anemic because he was playing a late game AD carry against a lethality Varus that uh, is not going to really let you play the game, right? Now he's on Ezreal, will have a big mid game impact, and uh, him and BDD might be able to take control of this game. It's just 369 and Casa that are destroying Rascal so far this series that is going to be the big thing to look out for here on the side of top esports. Yeah. Just packing their bags, essentially, filling them up with gold. Yeah. As another plate will fall to the Jace. And now more of those plates should be falling down here as well as Casa looking to try and snowball the Jace even further in this game. Should be able to grab Agatha and then move over and lock that one down. Decides he doesn't want to, actually. Oh, no. He's channeling the back for a second. Knight turns up, he's going to collect some of that money as well. They will be able to grab the first turret. 
and a whole bunch of plates here also. A thousand gold lead based on the amount of uh, work that Cast has done earlier on in this game. And uh, we often talk down a bit to this Rek'Sai pick, but so far in this early game, they've been using it exactly how Rek'Sai is supposed to be used. Yeah. She just does roll over early games if you can get into the right positions. Exactly. It's like the Rek'Sai dream, essentially. And it's very good into... Uh, a jungle that you're going up against in, in uh, Graves, who is going to be looking to just sit back, AoE farm up, scale up, and be more of a, a menace compared to you in the later stages. But if you're the one being, you know, if this were solo queue and you're the Graves, you've died once, and the enemy jungle has 3-0, there would be that one guy who's in the chat, he's like, jungle difference already, yeah. you know? Or he's <laughs> like, like FF15. Yeah, uh, you know, it's solo queue, so. Yeah. There's always going to be some of that fun stuff, but... Definitely, I'm sure, you know, some people would be feeling that jungle difference already. But as you mentioned, I think uh, the Ezreal Azir is still going to provide more as the game does come along. And if Genji can just hold on, we, we've seen a little bit of that today from some of the LPL teams earlier, where it's like, they have this comp that scales really well. And then they're like, <laughs> I think it was JDG, they, they dive in with the package and they have a Sivir. Yeah. who has only Caulfield's Warhammer. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you're forcing a fight for no reason. And then they just got wiped, and then they lost the game from there. Like, Gen Z's going to play, they're going to play smarter than that. They're an LCK team that are just used to scaling, and so they'll feel more comfortable doing it. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Ruler tries to flex a little bit down in the bottom side, but other than that, it should just be Gen Z trying to sit back and scale. Yeah, should indeed be. Ruler will be parked in the mid lane for mid game and uh, should be relatively immovable. I think Ezreal is a fantastic pick into the Rek'Sai with what he wants, what she wants to do as well because of the fact that you can build up some armor and avoid being one shot uh, by a Rek'Sai getting a decent flank onto you. Not to mention the mobility that he does have also. So. Certainly some things uh, in favor of Genji as this game goes on, but if Rascal continues to play Worse than 369. 369 already with a lot of extra money. Ghost Blade completed compared to Build a Bear Workshop, as our friend LS would call it. Uh, put together by Rascal. Uh, certainly is an early game that top esports would be very happy with. Knight down onto B2D. The uh, pilfered ones that uh, Knight had picked up. Yeah, we're just chilling. You know, there's the Infernal Drake available, I think, top. Esports should be trying to make moves towards that. Instead, he's going to get flash knock up. There's the ulti, but the void rush is there, and in fact, not even required. As Knight's going to pick up that kill very easily. Face check and brushes, not a great way to do it. And uh, B2D thinking that he was a bit safer than he was, but this is. I mean, you were talking about jungle difference. I don't know whether this is like. It's not any slight on the clip, but when Kasa is this fed. But you have to be so much more careful going into the darkness, no matter which side of the rift you're on. Yeah, it's, you got to play against what the opponent has, you know, especially a rec side that can burst you down and is fed. He's, he's going, he's got lethality already. He's got the one Dirk, plus yeah. the warrior enchant that's completed. And now top esports are getting proactive. I yeah, like this. Nine dives on in. Clit unable to do anything at all. Cosmic Radiance comes down, so Kellen is going to be alive for a while, but Ruler is already dead. Moonlight Vigil secures the kill onto Clit. And I think this is looking like the beginning of the end. 7-1 to one is the kill score now. 4,000 the gold lead. And we were talking about late games. I think uh, Genji can probably say goodbye to a late game even existing. You, you know what I like about this too? This isn't really Gen G making giant mistakes. It's like top esports are finding these little edges. And you can see Genji, they're, they're not trying to be aggressive. They're trying to fight. But top esports are being so proactive and they're finding the little angles and the perfect timings to go for the plays. And they're just straight up outplaying Gen G. It's it's really cool to see. Like not only this. I mean, this is just we, we've seen this in solo queue. We've seen it in pro play. You got to be careful when you're going into a dark jungle where you yeah. have no vision. But this is really nice. Look at this ward. It's the TP ward. They prepared for this. And yeah. they, they, they had the Rex Eye set up right after the Infernal Drink. Maybe Gen G could have been a little bit farther down the lane to play even more safe. But they noticed that they were just a little bit up the lane, and I mean, there's not much to talk about in the fight because it was, you know, 5v3. And they just totally wiped the floor with them, and now that's going to give Top Esports a massive lead with their nice mid-game composition. Not to mention 369 transition his advantage into the bottom lane 
where Ruler and Kellen were actually doing a decent job. And uh, you can see that CS gap is certainly closed. Total damage dealt certainly in favor of 369 right now, but Casa is uh, absolutely no slouch. 900 gold for the cannon is uh, sort of a product of uh, how this game the, the has damage. been going. It's like he's just a passenger in the game. He's not really interacting with the enemy. He, yeah. he can't get near the Jinx, so he's just sitting there. Even Tarek has more damage than him because Tarek's interacting in the 2v2. And now this might be when Ruler begins to make some mistakes. Well, uh, he's dead. I uh, just decided that he wasn't going to be able to make it out there. Knight with a much better roam. BDD. Uh, yeah, needs to be a little bit careful. Almost in shock blast range there. As uh, Kellen, pretty close to it as well. As he's taking a lot of damage here. Casa should be able to take down Shirley. As um, yeah, they are that one kill on the bottom side of the map has uh, saved Gen G from being perfect game at this point. Yeah, ruler giveth, ruler taketh away. I suppose it's ruler taketh and then giveth away in this case. Yeah, I guess. And. Yeah, you can see, you know, he's really trying to press whatever angle he's got, right? He's like, if I could 1v1 solo kill, that would potentially get my team back in the game. And it's it's a good read by Knight to just say, okay, he's, you know, he's probably going to stay here. He's going to get greedy. And Ruler did exactly that. He got a bit greedy, stuck around a little bit too long, and wasn't able to get any kills or any damage or anything like that, and feeds a kill over to the Zoe, which is... <laughs> Again, not someone you want to feed kills to. That's even uh, more value than giving kills to the Rek'Sai. Uh, also, Ruler's going Trinity Force, which I disagree with as well. Uh, the extra value that you get against 369, Kasa, and Jackalov this game by picking up a Iceborne Gauntlet as an AD carry is just insane. It's just yeah. really, really good. Uh, but Ruler not going to go there once the big two item power spike that is going to be late anyway. Maybe he just feels like, you know, I've got to take a risk in some way. Like, yeah. you can see it in this play where he's like, you need the I gotta acceleration. push up, I gotta, you know, push whatever edge I've got. Maybe I can 1v1, maybe I can push the AD carry and, and get, a, you know, a, a 5 10 CS lead through this. Maybe I can pick up Trinity Force and have like a, a sick pop off big game fight. But I, I do agree. I think uh, Ice One Gauntlet is just, you know, wow. a better item. Casa has an edge of nine. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that's impressive. Okay, Genji underneath their sun turret, but everyone on the side of top esports are converging. Power shock blast does not find the mark, but uh, Genji just trying to see what their options are. Rascal can teleport in. This might be a team fight opportunity that they could utilize, as the bubble is going to go wide as well. Ruler. Eventually gets here, but the flanking Ezreal isn't necessarily what you're looking for. But Yu Yanja takes a fair bit of damage, and now Cast is in trouble. There it is. Cosmic Radiance comes down as well, but the Void Rush is pretty good. Buys some extra time as BDD gets his kill. Yu Yanja, very, very low. Jackie Love down to half. Knights at full, and 369 still scary, but it's one pick off for Gen G, and they'll take it. Yeah, I guess they really weren't expecting the flanking Ezreal in this case, and. Uh, Top Esports made it really obvious that they wanted to take a team fight straight up. And you know who's really great at that is Tarek. And so the second yeah. they engage, it's just like, okay, I, I can press my R button and we're going to win this fight. And that's essentially what happened as, uh, you know, Gorilla was also poking them in the back and flanking them. So Top Esports getting a little bit, you know, antsy. They really want to push their lead and they don't want this game to go too long. But they got themselves into an awkward spot in this team. Yeah, I actually really liked uh, the fact that they utilized Ruler to get that extra poke damage down. Knight was then distracted, and Casa, nothing he could do after BDD engaged. Good to see that BDD still has his eye in. His Azir looking as fantastic as ever. So we might have a game on our hands, guys. But 4,000 gold is still the lead here for top. They have the composition that wants to excel right now. They missed out on their first opportunity, but that does not mean that this comp isn't still strong, especially with Jackie Love's items. My god. Runans and the uh, Infinity Edge. That is not a Warhammer. That is two <laughs> big, big items. Yeah. We, we were talking a lot about scaling, and uh, the Aphelios is... I mean, we've seen that already today, what he can provide to a late-game team fight. So even though you are going up against the Zero Ezreal and Graves, uh, Jackie Love could eventually, especially if he gets ahead like he is, uh, 
can carry himself as they're going to try to push the issue. Yep. We'll actually get a charge out of Shirley here as well, which is uh, good news for Tom. What Having to sort of emergency put it down as another Emperor's Divide under the turret. Jackie Love obliterated immediately, but BDD sacrificed himself for it. Yu Yu Yanja should be going down, but the turret also falls. And now Kasa looking to try and get his work done. There's the flash in instant exhaust under Rascal, but he goes golden. They grab the kill under the Thrash, and now Ruler is still alive. He's doing so much damage, but he is taken down so low by 369. Kellen tries to run away, and Topper still so far ahead and needs to be respected. The flash from Knight, oh. and he's not going to be duped by the Tarek. And Knight gets the ace. This game could be very close to over. Yeah, they're absolutely going to pick up the inhibitor here, but man. This is what I love about some of these LPL teams. They never back down from a fight, even when it's looking really scary. They see the cannon, and they're like, okay, well, this is kind of scary. Immediate exhaust, and then the re-engage from uh, Knight and 369 to do some incredible damage at the end of the fight. Even after it looks pretty good for BDD, you can see he's pretty low, but he knows he's got to go for this play. Finds Jackie Love into the stun, and you're like, okay, not a bad trade. And then you see the flank coming in, and then Tarek gets a really nice stun here afterwards. You're thinking, oh, Gen Z might be able to win this one. But look at the re-engage here. 369 jumps in. They're all going forward. And they know that they, you know, they've got the item advantage. They've got the, the damage advantage. And they're just able to, you know, put the blinders on. And just walk straight forward into the enemy team even after a couple of really scary engages from the side of Gen G. So Top Esports flexing, and now they've got 208 Jace and 502 <laughs> Zoe, who yeah. is almost at three items already at 22 minutes. And the, the Siege is something that I think that Gen G just might not be able to stand up to. I mean, it's 13 to five, 6,000 gold is currently the lead. It's just uh, Top Esports with all of the control in the world. Opportunities, of course, for Gen G based on the comp that they have to try and get back. And there is a Zonya's now sitting under Rascal. BDD desperately wanting to get himself towards the stopwatch. But uh, this Baron, not sure whether Gen G are going to be able to get here in time. They do know that it's happening. Ruler should be able to have a true shot barrage. He does throw it forward, but it's not going to be enough. To grab anything there is now clear. Dashing forward, looking for Jackie Love. But I think Jackie Love more than happy to take that fight as Yanja goes down to about half. But just the uh, disengage. Free Baron over to top esports, and they're honestly just looking like the better team today. Yeah, I mean, they drafted better in the blind pick, and they played it better. And now, once again, here in the real pick fan, they've just been outplaying Gen G at every turn. Really, the only nice thing that happened for Gen G was the ruler pop off 2v2. Yeah, ever since then, it's been only downhill. It's top esports do in fact look like the better team. You know, it's not even just Knight. It's it's as a team, they're playing better here. As Gen G, they're getting uh, a little bit sneaky. 20 seconds until Mountain Drake. Yanja taking a bit of damage there from B to D. Uh, okay, B to D has to avoid the bubble. He's angry. Yeah, they do have Cosmic Radiance. So Gen G do have a lot of team fight tool, tools, and Yanja is very, very low. You can see Jackie Love, <laughs> he's just going to go take an inhibitor. Uh, All right, guys. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, the mid lane's become very short as Kasa moves on in. There's the slicing Maelstrom. Does have to use the Zonyas now as the rest of the team slowly moving on in to try and lock down some kills, but Flash gets Kasa to safety. Inhibitor was taken away from, and uh, now Rascal has to be really careful. Look oh. at all the damage. <laughs> Moonlight Vigil comes in, and that is an Emperor's Divide that was decent, but stopwatch for one of them, not enough damage for the other. Double kill comes through for Jackie Love, and Ruler is trying to escape, but I don't think he's going to be able to. Knight trying to dash around and look for him, but maybe Ruler's going to survive. The base, probably not going to be so lucky. Absolutely not. Just delayed the back, push down the mid lane, and you should be able to win this game. As, man, Top Esports looking like the favorites. I mean, even against the, the two teams we saw earlier today, they are just dominating Gen Z here in this yeah. best of five. This is a speed run, 24 minutes into 25 minutes. And, uh,. I don't know. I don't know what happened last night with Gen G. Maybe celebrating early, uh, something that they were doing. Remember, Top has had a lot of extra time, so I'm not going to make any excuses. This is just Top Esports domination so far this game.
And it's not coming from where we were necessarily expecting, right? It's not like Knight is just hard carrying for his team. It's 369 just being so good. And uh, we're looking for a pen so that we can... Oh, uh, there it oh, is. There we go. Yep, <laughs> got him. Uh, give it to him again. Nah. <laughs> uh, Yenta yeah. again? <laughs> yeah, give it to Yenta No. I, I, I so handed good. it over to Karsa. I think he got the snowball rolling. Um, and he made Rek'Sai look like a champion worth, worth picking. You remember is, he uh, auto-locked that Rek'Sai. They banned Lee Sin. He's like, okay, Rek'Sai. Yeah. At, on R4, he was like, no, you're, you're not going to ban me out. And then... We're so used to in the LCK. When I saw that pick, I'm like, uh, I kind of like sigh to myself. I'm like, oh, I don't really like this. It doesn't really do much. And that's because in the LCK, it's so, you know, it's so laid back, so defensive. They I mean, love to scale, but Carson's not that kind of player. He's not, but also it works really good in tandem with Zoe, especially around a mid game that you are able yeah. to sort of move yourself towards. I think the top esports had a great composition uh, roaming around sort of like their poke into hard engage. Uh, was something that you can do with a with a fed Jace like they had, and Casa buys a lot of time by being a Rek'Sai and being able to go untargetable. So, just a just a really great composition. I think that we saw a little bit more out of uh, Ruler this game, but he's now been through two supports and not found a victory. Yeah, I wonder whether life is going to be coming back in because actually maybe you should go down there and maybe he wants a third support. Well, we did here, so we <laughs> know that there is an LCK level support. Also, he's a he's a free agent. So if you want, if you want, we did on your professional League of Legends team, uh, then he is certainly someone that you should should consider. Did win a game in the promotion won a tournament. Game, yeah, Griffin. So you can go and watch that for some highlights. As uh, this is the only Gen G highlight that we have for this series so far. Yeah, and it's just Jackula thinking that he can stand up to the Ezreal, but not the case. And once again, this is Karsa, right place, right time. And yeah. you were talking about that. It is. It's the knockup that the mini know. stun for the knockup that got animation cancelled yeah. as the flash was coming in. But you, of course, can't stop the CC. This is kind of just like the Carsa highlight reel. It right is. Here. But it, it, again, it, it comes down to team plays like this as well. That uh, they caught Genji off guard in spots that weren't even necessarily that greedy to be in. You know, and they also, weren't that far down the lane. Clit also just walked out of the Cosmic Radiance. Fun. Yeah. Some, uh, certainly it's a mix of top just playing much better, having better ideas on how to play the game, understanding the meta a lot better. But it's also Gen G making some weird mistakes that they were not making in their first day of play. It was a, a Gen G that certainly had a whole lot more control. You remember their vision control around the map, things like this. Like they looked like they were regular season Gen G, but now we're getting playoffs, best of five Gen G. And it's uh, not like it used to be, I'll tell you that much. They yeah. used to get themselves to Worlds every year by winning Worlds Gauntlets. qve has gone, and uh, so is that best of five prowess by the looks of things. Knight coming in here, kind of just smurfing, you know. The the mid jungle, it seems like, are, are just much better tonight from top esports. Top jungle, I think, has been the biggest issue. Uh, Rascal's just looked... That's true. Yeah, he, I he's mean... He's looked like that platinum dude that's... Uh, not, not uh, giving the matchmaking a uh, service right now. Pelios is a pretty cool champion. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that. 4k damage Didn't is even a matter. It's not really what you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, after after the play that, again, we, we don't have access to the comms. I don't know if it was um, Clay that was calling for the 2v1 up in the top side. You know, with the, He was calling for the TP, like, let's go. Let's take down Jace. He's being a little bit greedy. He's overstaying. Yeah. Um, but after that happened, whoever's fault it was, that was just the end of the top lane. <laughs> yep. There was no TP. There was TP advantage for Jace, by the way, which is how they created that play on the bottom side of the map with the TP ward. So they had that. They had the win in the top side because Carson was hanging around there. Yep. And shut down multiple lanes at the, at the same time and got their mid-game siege comp super far ahead. And that's really all it, it came down to. A couple plays. Yep. And also, yeah, I... I the thing is, like, if, if you're Gen G, what do you look at and go, we need to change this? It's like everything. It's like that, that <laughs> meme of, like, all of it. <laughs> he's really good apart Just from the this, 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 this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. Ugh. Yeah. Um, 
I think we Glitz were... looked really off today as well, um, after having a good day yesterday. Yeah, he looked um, better on the Elites. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he looked better on that. 369 is going to pick up the player of the game. Again? As you said, I, I think it was, like, top jungle difference in this one. Yep. And well deserve it. I mean, it was either him or Karsa. I think Karsa deserved it more because he did more uh, along the entire map. But Jace... Got caught out a couple of times as well, though, so I can understand. Yeah, and the, the Jace turn. TP in the bottom side, that so was uh, also very key. Don't mind it at all. You can see his mechanics really on point here that allowed this to be a straight-up double kill. No back kills. Here's the TP. Yeah, it, it, it just, it kind of looks like these two teams aren't really playing on at the same level right Not now. Not at all. They don't seem to be on the same level as Gen G, maybe still asleep after yesterday, but uh, they've had enough time to, to come back, and really the only excuse is the play so far. So Top Esports really trying to show everybody that, yeah, we are the better team, by the way. And, uh... Yeah, that's really all there is to say. Yeah, and we know that Genji are capable of uh, much more than this, which is why we have a bit of a disappointed tone here, and we hope that we c they come back in game number three and show us that, you know, the LCK isn't this easy to push over, because so far, they um, they really haven't shown us that. We, they haven't shown us the potential. The thing is, it's really, really hard to turn around your mentality uh, in, when it's match point now, and you're staring down the barrel of a necessary yeah. reverse sweep to get yourself... Uh, back into anything. So. Imagine how Ruler feels right now after like dunking 2v2 and then he just gets focused down and regardless of if it's like a team's fault or his fault or whatever. It's It's got to be tilting. It's got to feel bad. Exactly. So now they've got five minutes to reset. We're going to go to a short break when we get back. Game number three.